Okay, well I made it to Kyoto. That was awesome on a bullet train. Too bad I didn't see Mount Fuji because of the weather. Very uh, rainy, foggy. I think if I would have waited a couple of hours, I would have had a great view. But I've got several more days coming up on the train, so I'll see it. Now I gotta head to the Hilton Garden Inn. We've gotta find exit one and heading that way. Arrived. I'm in time for happy hour too. I have a separate video on the Hilton Garden in Kyoto. I hope you check it out. This is the building I saw from my hotel room. Temple. I know there's a lot of amazing food in Japan, but I just couldn't pass up on an Irish bar one block away from the hotel. Great fish and chips. Then I had tons of Japanese food later. Next time I'm in Kyoto, I'm gonna take the hop on, hop off, ho-ho bus. Well, I spent the first night in Kyoto just walking around the city. Had to see what was around the hotel. I like to get my bearings. I did make it all the way up to the Imperial Palace, which was quite a long walk, about 40 minutes. And when I got there, the palace was closed, so I couldn't really see anything. So I decided to just continue walking around the city. I found some really cool shopping areas in the Teramachi district. It's more like an indoor shopping mall and an outdoor shopping mall at the same time. And the Christmas decorations were very beautiful. And everybody seemed to be in a shopping spirit. It was nice. This shopping area had two long streets that went several blocks and there was everything in there. You had pubs, you had US fast food restaurants, you had a movie theater, lots of Christmas decorations. It was absolutely a fun walk. I saw a lot of Santa Clauses and it was even a slot machine casino. Although I really wasn't sure where I was going, I had a general idea that I was heading toward the Gion district or Geisha district. I saw some pretty cool things along the way. There's an amazing theater with traditional Japanese plays and music. Just past that beautiful theater, I saw this beautiful Shinto shrine called the Yusaka shrine. I spent quite a bit of time walking through here Absolutely beautiful. I'll have to come back in here in the morning and see it in the daylight. I am so lost, yet I'm seeing vending machines. I'm supposed to be in the Geisha district. That sign says no photography going up there, so I must be. Oftentimes I find when I get lost, I find some of the coolest places. I came across this beautiful garden area. that had to be a resort and they had some beautiful views and apparently there's restaurants and they do lots of weddings here, which isn't surprising because look at those beautiful views. Well, I finished my beautiful walk of the Gion district and decided to head back to the hotel, get some rest and come back here in the morning. Okay, back in the subway, I'm gonna go back to the Geisha district. Looks like I lost it last night. Did I get this? Just remember, if you're traveling on the Japan Rail Pass, that doesn't cover subways. But the Welcome Suica card did, so be sure you pick one of those up at the airport. It's right where I was last night, right where it started. Most people stop at the crossing lights. Very, very, very few do not. If the green one starts flashing, it's gonna to go to red pretty soon. I love how they make use of the waterways. There's quite a few bridges and along the banks of the rivers, there's beautiful bike and jogging paths. This is the beautiful building known as the Minimiza Theater where they have traditional Japanese shows. 
And I didn't get a chance to take one in on this trip, but I'm definitely going to put it on my list of things to do the next time I come back to Kyoto. It looked beautiful last night. It looks even more beautiful during the day. It's like 9.14 in the morning here, so pretty early, except the subway was absolutely packed. Ah, this is the temple or shrine, the Saka, I believe. I was here last night. Should see a lot more in the daytime. It's absolutely beautiful here. According to Google, this shrine was built in 656 AD. That makes it almost 1,400 years old, and it's been kept up beautifully. I was amazed by the beautiful colors, the amazing craftsmanship. I just loved it. That's the watchtower that I took a picture of last night from that beautiful garden. Just taking a different path than last night. You never know what you find. Kyoto is one of the most beautiful cities I've seen in my travels around the world during my retirement. I hope you find this video informative and subscribe to my channel. I just loved walking around the historical districts of Kyoto, especially the Geisha district or Gion district as they call it. My head was constantly on a swivel and every time I turned around, I seemed to find something beautiful. Like this that reminded me of the reclining Buddha in Thailand, which I haven't been to yet, but I'm going to have to go. Again, this is the Geisha Gion district. They had little Buddhas everywhere, little statues. And the sign there says, be sure to touch them for good luck. I did. There's that watchtower again. It sure is a cool landmark to use when I'm walking around the Kyoto Geisha district. This is a walk down the San Anzaka path, very famous for its shops, restaurants, beautiful architecture. A great place to take a stroll and people watch. Beautiful part of town. Walking down the San Anzaka path in the Geisha district, I saw a lot of people in traditional Japanese outfits. Saw a lot of Japanese gifts, a lot of Japanese food, a lot of Japanese students. Looks like there were a lot of them on field trips this day. And here's something else I've never seen in the States. A Snoopy chocolate store. I wonder how that tastes. Well, no matter which path you take, you're going to find something beautiful here. Amazing. Founded in 778 AD. Most of the 30 buildings were destroyed by fire about 10 times over the years and reconstructed in 1633. This temple I just happened to stumble across is probably one of the most famous ones in Kyoto. It was beautiful. And look at the views you get from the hill. There's Kyoto Tower and downtown Kyoto. The beautiful mountains in the background. Just like everywhere else in Kyoto, my head was on a swivel and I kept seeing all kinds of beautiful monuments and artifacts. And there's another bell. Didn't have a chance to ring that one like I did in Hiroshima. If you haven't watched that video, please be sure to check it out. There's more people with kimonos. I just thought they were beautiful. If you want to get a kimono yourself, there were plenty of places to rent them throughout the city of Kyoto, mostly in the Geisha district. Everywhere I turned, I saw something beautiful. I don't really know what this was, but it seemed very popular. I'll have to check it out for the next trip. I even saw an old-fashioned rickshaw. That would be a fun thing to take on the next trip. These were interesting. When I saw these parasols, I knew I somehow ended up back on the San Anzaca path. I didn't mind. Chance to sample more food, check out some more of their cool shops. But then I decided it was time to head back towards the hotel. 
until I saw this massive monument that looked like a Buddha to me. So I decided to go find it and check it out. Okay, for 300 yen, I get this incense stick and I burn inside the monument, the Rosy Cannon. Okay, there's, apparently there's wild monkeys here. Never get a picture of them, never get near them, never feed them. Where are they? Still not sure where I'm supposed to put this incense. I think at the front entrance. This area of the temple seemed to be more of a storage area, although they did have some amazing displays and the candles were lit. So I guess it's visited quite frequently. It was absolutely beautiful. And there's where I put the incense. This is the monument that I saw several blocks away, and I'm so glad I came to check it out. Everything just seems so calm and peaceful. And I don't know that much about the Buddhism religion, but I'm pretty sure calm, peacefulness, and happiness is a part of it. And it sure showed here. This is the path that I took last night. I took this same walking path last night but I really couldn't tell how beautiful the mansions were. It's hard to see from the side of the road here, but take my word for it. They're amazing. This path is beautiful. There's actually an American Express card area right behind this gate here, but apparently it's only for Japan-based American Express cards. Lots of shops on this quaint Kyoto walking path. There was so much of Kyoto that I was not able to see because of time constraints, but I'm definitely going back. Now it's time to head back to the train. If you're gonna walk from the Hilton Garden Inn to the Kyoto train station, which I recommend because by the time you take the subway, which takes you deep into the station, and walk to where you need to go to, you're gonna be walking the same amount of time, so save the money on your Suica card. And uh, I highly recommend taking the the right side, Karamusa Dori, which is the street, because this temple here in front of the uh, Kyoto Tower has very nice paved walkways compared to the other side of the street. But there's a lot of intersections and crosswalks with stoplights. Anyway, I would stay on the right side from Milton Garden Inn to the Kyoto Station. You get some exercise getting those steps. On to Tokyo. Let's take a walk inside this temple. Beautiful. Is it a temple or is it a shrine?
koi. I'm at the Kyoto Rail Station. Let's look at the lines for the ticket machines. I think I'm gonna have to go into the Rail Pass office. Line looks pretty big in there too. It's all right, not sure what train I wanna get yet anyway. Anytime you have questions, feel free to leave me a comment in the comment section. I love hearing from everybody and uh, I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I usually do it in the same day, if I'm not traveling. We'll see you.